Um, all right, well, this was actually wound up being a good sequence of events, I guess, between Jason's uh, talk and the conversation kind of around versioning and where, why and where we're at, where we are. So um, let's see, I, I think the thing that I wanted to start off first was just, I don't know if anybody's in, you know, has sushi or understands the history on why um, you're given ginger. And it's actually about, you know, cleansing the palate, kind of a transition from one thing to another. And I just wanted to try to take this as an opportunity to, you know, we wanted to be able to take a moment and really talk in depth. This is something that's obviously been going on for a couple of years now on the discussions we've been having around how do we support other things in a registry. Um, and now we're trying to take that next level of not just storing other things, but establishing relationships between them. And everything that Jason has been, was kind of talking about earlier has been the things we've been bumping up against the whole time. So I wanted to kind of take a step back and not just talk about some of the technical reasons why we've done things, but what it is we're trying to achieve. So, um, and also what is, you know, why, why did we take certain approaches? So I really just wanted to kind of take a step back and just kind of think about a couple of things, because I know we've often talked about design A versus design B and, you know, what makes the difference between those. So I was trying to play a little bit with some of the Seattle thing of, you know, what, what is the best design? You know, suspension bridge, cable bridge, floating bridge, or a tunnel. So, you know, what would, what would the best design be? Right? What, what's the answer to that? Well, I'm trying to have a little interaction here. They're all good. <laughs> They're all good. And I guess they all can be good, right? They all can be good, but it depends, right? The requirements really do clarify what the design. They're all good designs. It's just a matter of which design applies to what problem. So I really do need some engagement besides Josh, who I don't know if people hear him over there, but you know, if I'm going under downtown Seattle, what's going to be the best design? I don't know if I really want to put a suspension bridge across downtown Seattle. And you know, so we had Bertha. And Bertha definitely had some problems trying to get through downtown Seattle. But if you get a chance, you know, if you've ever been to Boston back in the day when all the elevated uh, uh, roads were back there, it was not you know, the most exciting city at times. Where if you go back now, all of those roads have been taken out. It's absolutely beautiful. They're all green spaces. And that's what the Seattle waterfront is starting to turn into. So that was the best application there. In Common Arrows, it's a large span. It's got a shallow bottom. There's large boat traffic that has to get through it, right? So in this case, suspension bridges turn out to be a bet, the best design for that. Now, this is another example of suspension bridges were the right design. Turns out the first one didn't go so well. And there was definitely some problems that were a little catastrophic. There's some great videos to always look at Gallup and Gertie there and before it collapsed and people walking across it. So in this case, the suspension bridge was the right design, but they didn't realize the wind load that impacted it. So even a good design still may need some learnings to go, uh, go along the way. So now it's actually got a pretty big, pretty nice bridge and you can get across and it's wonderful. And the last one, I'll just mess with Lake Washington. Uh, Lake Washington is kind of an interesting one. So it's really deep bottom, poor soil, so, and it turns out there's some views that they'd like to protect. Um, so there's, and there's limited boat traffic, meaning there is boat traffic, but it's not container ships or uh, cruise ships that are going underneath there. So, and the lake is controlled in its height. So it turns out a suspension bridge doesn't work well because there's no good place to put the pilings. Really don't want the visualization of this, you know, what could be a beautiful suspension bridge blocking the views. So we have, a new floating bridge, right? They replaced the, the old floating bridge. And the point is that there is good, all these are good designs. It really is depends on the requirements and then is the design actually flushed out all the way. And that has a lot to do with how we've come to uh, where we're at with the, the artifact spec. And that was about what, what are the requirements? Now, we didn't set out to define references. 
we were building Notary V2 and we were trying to figure out how do we accomplish the goals. And a lot of it was based on what do we learn from Notary V1? It wasn't V1 was you know a, a really poorly intended approach. There was some things about it that we wanted to fix. And one of which was we wanted to promote things across within and across registries. For anybody that's used Docker Content Trust and Notary V1, if you sign an image in repo one and registry one, you can't even move copy that content to repo two in the same registry without having to re-sign it. The whole point of signing is I can move things and know where, I, where it's still the same identity of where it came from. Not the only point, but a main piece of it. As we were going through this, and this actually took us a couple of months, I don't have the whole list of people there, but Brandon was, I know, was part of this original conversation. Of, it took us a couple of months to realize we did not want to change the tag or the digest. Kind of sounds obvious now, but at the time there was a lot of debates, like why can't we update the tag with something new? Um, Notary V1 did it, it was that a bad thing? Turns out it was. We wanted to make sure that all the Helm charts, all the kube deploy files, all the Docker lock things that turned a tag into a digest, that those flows didn't change. All we were doing was adding the ability to check a signature on it. We wanted offline signature creation. This one had a little bit to do with um, how we create manifests and um, we couldn't just rely on when it's being pushed, the manifest being created on the fly. It actually has to get created offline because the idea is you want to build the image, build the SBOM, sign them all, validate them. And then from this isolated machine that can't talk to anything, then you could send them to a registry out of the environment. And by the way, let's, you know, anybody has a question, uh, we have time. The purpose, we purposely blocked 90 minutes because we really wanted this one to be the chance we have a chance uh, to talk about this in detail. And uh, I can't see if somebody raises, I don't know if I'll see if somebody raises their hand. So can somebody just keep an eye on that? We wanted multiple signatures per artifact. We wanted to be able to say that uh, the net monitor image by this small software company um, they can sign it. It gets promoted from their small company to something like Docker Hub, where people would trust content from Docker Hub if it's certified content. So it would be signed with the Wabbit Networks key and a Docker Hub certified content key. Now, the stuff that's on Docker Hub that's not certified, that's either not signed or it's signed with a different key that just says, yeah, it came from Docker Hub, but there's no guarantee of the content. The point is, is that we want to be able to associate multiple signatures. Because when I then promote it into my environment, we use Acme Rockets as the small customer, there's another key that gets put on it that says I import it into the Acme Rockets environment. So now I have at least three keys on it. And what was happening, well, I'll get into the, uh, the side effects of it or the benefits of it. We also use the terms native persistence. We didn't want to make the registry know about signatures. We saw basically from the artifacts approach that if we can keep things generalized, that we there's probably other things that might be interesting to store in a registry that are enhancements to something. So we're already kind of building on this idea we wanted to add something to it because we already went through the uh, don't change the tags and digests. So how do we keep that generalization going? We needed to support air gap networks and air gap networks are not just submarines and oil platforms. Pretty much every customer in public clouds wants their private environment. They want private IPs. They want to limit what you could connect to both ex both egress and ingress. How do we make sure that we support that concept that the signatures are not somewhere else they're with the content. So. It, the these kind of you know this story is not really meant to be or anything around notary v2 the point is, is we were going through that half and that's how we were coming up with these requirements that we wanted to make generalized so we wanted to be able to, like i said content promote stuff from to secured environments the wabbit network stuff i've got an image an sbom i might have gpl source all of those are signed a little blue signatures it gets promoted to docker hub there's some additional signatures put on it it gets promoted into the Acme Rockets environment. It's air gapped. That's what that double line is representing. And then there is a third key put on it. In fact, inside the Acme environment, they might create a deploy script. Don't even care what technology it is. But it's signed with an Acme Rockets signature so that now inside of Acme, 
they don't need to look at any of the other ones. Like when you go into the airport after you've passed through TSA, they don't look at your boarding, they don't look at your um, driver's license or your passport anymore. They look at that little little stamp that's on your boarding pass. So we wanted to make sure inside of those environments, you don't need to look at any of the other keys. And the, again, the point here is that what we recognized is we needed to be able to add associations to something that was in the registry that we could promote across. So we kind of came away with these principles. Um, multiples exist, and we're really trying to avoid having to build yet another storage service. It's not that we don't, it's not that the registry is complete by any means. It's, do you really want to build, and I had a slide, I actually don't think I have it in this deck, of the eye chart of list of features that, that all of our registries have to implement. And none of them are exciting things per se. VNets, customer managed keys, availability zones, geo-replication, you know, resilience, blah, blah, blah. That's not something that trying, somebody's trying to build a new service for. So can we do this in a way that we can add to the infrastructure that's there so that somebody's trying to build their thing, they don't need to build the storage for, service for their thing. So the, here we've got the references are persisted alongside and you're starting to see some of the terminology come in, the thing that they're associating with, container image, a WASM, a Helm chart, whatever. So, we, and we wanna be able to solve this discovery problem because inside of that air-gapped environment, I can't get to Docker Hub. It's explicitly blocked. So I want that signature, the SBOM, security scan results, things we haven't else yet thought of yet to be in there. Um, they're also separable. So I, I call this the Trojan horse attack where I don't want to download the image to pull a layer of the signature. Aside from the fact that it has, we can't, if you put it in as one of the layers, the digest changes. But I want to be able to say, just like you stand at the passport uh, line and you hand your passport through the window, you don't go through. You get your passport through. And if they approve you, then you go through. Take a look at the SBOM, take a look at the signature, take a look at whatever the reference type is that you're, you want to use, and only if that's approved do you actually download the container image, the WASM, the Helm chart, whatever. <clears throat> and then the last one is the, the same thing as the digest mustn't change. So then we kind of came back to, all right, what does this mean for registries? What is it that we want in a registry? And I've actually purposely, that white space on the graph on the right is purposely removed because at this point that's not important. The idea is we want to be able to push something, push a reference type to something that's already in the registry, meaning the things that are already there today. And it's a, we went, we looked at many to many, we looked at one to, one to many, many to one, and what we landed on was there's one thing that we put in the registry, like a, you know, a helm chart, a container image, whatever, and I could have multiple references. I could have multiple signatures, multiple SBOMs, multiple signatures on SBOMs. So if you notice, there's a graph there. And what you're seeing is uh, also this reverse index thing that we've been talking quite a bit about. So a manifest for a container image has a downward, I can refer to downward reference to the config, which is persisted as a blob, and n number of layers. This manifest knows about that. When I pushed this netmonitor image, it didn't know about any signatures. It certainly doesn't know about the new signatures I might add to it. Because if, we, if it does, well, by definition, the manifest then is changed, the digest changes, my ID changes. So we needed a way to send a reverse thing to it. So in this case, I'm pushing a signature, which is persists the actual signature as a blob, and it has a new property that is referenced back up to that container image. And then, of course, it could just continues. And while the first thing is actually the OCI image, if this SBOM is persisted as an artifact manifest, for instance, the signature, which is an artifact manifest, it can point to it. So basically, we, we wanted to make sure that you can sign anything or put an SBOM in anything that made sense. So it, you don't need to. We, what I didn't put in here is we didn't want to have to touch or risk anything to do with the container runtime environment. There's literally no change to the container image stack or runtimes or anything. All of this is completely transparent to it. 
Um, so it's part of the one to many. I was trying to where I was going with that. We wanted to hide all this metadata. And I'll show a slide in this in a second, but basically we really didn't want the fact that there is a signature in SBOM or things that we haven't thought about to pollute the APIs and the UIs that customers are using today. How do we surface this information in a way that can be additive and not, you know, it'd be acknowledged and, and additive, but not pollute the existing APIs. Again, we didn't want to break, and I'm doing the air quotes on break, the existing experiences. Now, the important part of that arrow is this discover of references. Because what the customer is trying to do when they deploy that net monitor image, they're not looking for a signature. They're, all their references are net monitor colon v1 or net monitor, uh, you know, at SHA-256, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's what their references are. What we want to be able to say is that, and that's the value that travels through the ecosystem for their end-to-end -end relation, you know, the end-to-end -end, uh, workflows. So when that kube deploy happens in an OPA uh, or whatever you want to put, some kind of validation there, the information that passed through was net monitor and the digest or the tag. So now we want to be able to go back to the registry and say, hey, what references do you have for this thing that I'm trying to deploy? We didn't want to have to send new information through that pipe. We want to say, look, it's, it's actually a reverse index. The registry now knows that these three things, or actually it's two things to be fair, the SBOM and the signature were added to the image, but the registry needs to know about that somehow so we can pull it out. And that's this discover API. And because we recognize there probably won't be tens of thousands of references, there may be enough that I don't want to get them all at one shot. We wanted to do some filtering on it. So there's a, so I, I wanna know which is the SBOM or sorry, which of the references are an SBOM? Which of them are a signature A versus signature B? Or actually a notary signature versus a cosign signature. And then if it is one of those signatures, because I might have three Acme Rocket signatures on it. Sorry, I have three notary signatures on it. Which one is the Acme one? Because that's the only one I care about. I shouldn't have to go back to the registry and know, uh, sorry, I shouldn't have to get a whole round trip and get the blob back just to find out, oh, that's not the signature I was looking for. Now, this was the other interesting challenge. If we can know that something's an SBOM versus an artifact type, sorry, an SBOM versus a signature and signature type one versus signature type two, how do I, and, and that's a generalized concept. The idea that I can store things in a registry and there's different types like there's container images, there's signatures, there's SBOMs, and there's different companies doing di or different projects doing different SBOMs. How can I say within that artifact type, how do I have a different, differ a different differentiation, <laughs> a different pivot? And we didn't, again, we don't want the registries to know about any of these specialized types. So we said, all right, well, this one, we think we can use annotations for. So the Signatures might put an annotation for the C name or subject or something that says, this is the Acme Rocket signature. You can't trust this yet, but you can at least use it as a filter. So don't bother pulling the other three signatures down just to find out those were never the ones you wanted. There's an annotation there that says, yep, that's the one. And now the notary client can go figure out what it needs to do to go validate that. So we're trying to figure out how do we bubble up generalized concepts that can be used that aren't specific to any one technology. And then the poll turns out, we actually didn't need to, need to do anything on poll. Registries already have poll APIs that go by digests. All we had to do was make sure that the clients can figure out what is the digest to poll through that discovery API. And then the last one that's been the fun conversation <laughs> is lifecycle management. Um, if you know any registry that's been running for a while has a lot of content in it, and uh, whether you're free and paying it yourself or customers are paying it, they really don't like the idea of endless storage. And it's not just the cost of storage uh, that goes into it. Um, pretty much, it's not a secret. Every registry that's started probably didn't deal with deletion at front. Um, some of them I know are, are just implementing it now. 
uh, for the first year or two ACR, we, we did delete it from the UI and the APIs. The content looked like it was gone, but it was actually still there. It just, we took it out of the indexes. And we finally had a customer who says, look, you, I know I deleted it, it's not there, but did you really delete it? Like, what do you mean? You're not paying for it. It's not, you know, it's not in your quota. It's not, you know, you can't pull it. Like, yeah, but there's legal reasons we need to make sure it's actually gone. So we've all had to go implement that work. Likewise, customers that are keeping content, they didn't delete it yet. It's because they don't know how to manage all of what was deployed versus what was um, uh, just built and pushed. So it's, and again, the problem here is now you start doing security scans of what's in the registry. There is anything that's a couple of weeks old probably has some kind of vulnerability into it because just the way things come around. How do you know, sorry, if I want to, I, I need, let me rephrase that. I need to be able to go delete stuff because if it's not used, I am storing vulnerable content in my registry that's not being used, but it's still stored there. I need a way to get it out. And I need all of the little pieces of this metadata to have a way to go with it as well. So if we're starting to store these references, we needed to recognize that the only way to really do this in a complete way is to make sure that registries can track these things as a graph and have a way to delete not just the big blob container images, we joked about the size of ML, ML images before, but all these little objects add up. They're just a bunch of zombied objects if they're not actually tracked and have a way to uh, customers to delete them. Um, so this was the other piece where I was talking about, like, what should be seen? So if I've got um, a repo with a list of tags, and here I've just got a bunch of unique, you know, build numbers. Well, if I'm listing tags, and now I've got to start assigning, like, signature, or signature for Acme Rockets, and signature for uh, Wabbit Networks, or what is that other thing? Well, there's a signature for that other thing, and there's a, you know, and then because there's multiple signatures, this, this starts to get pretty messy. And I'm not even including digest in it. This is just, I've played around with the idea that I could have tags. Well, based on the artifact type in, in artifact, you know, the stuff we do today, I can use the manifest config.media type, fine. I can actually put a glyph on it and identify that these are signatures. It's still pretty noisy. That's not the way a customer wants to see this information. What they really wanna know is, I'm thinking about a container image. Yeah, it's interesting to know it's signed. Let's change that as a pivot of information that could be on that image, on that CNAV, on that Helm chart, on that WASM. And maybe I can store SBOMs, or maybe I can store metadata, or maybe I can store other things I haven't thought about yet. But the idea is I have enough information, the way this stuff is represented in the registry and in the manifest and the, all the APIs of as this goes back and forth, that I can do something like this. So that's, that's part of that. So I actually don't remember why I have Ginger again. So I'll, I'll pause there for a second and give folks a chance to ask questions. There's gotta be some questions or I don't know why we're doing it. Jason this. has his hand up. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, so the, the issue of, uh, you can hear me, right? Okay. Uh, the issue of the tag pollution, is that something we could solve by improving the tag list API to have filtering in the tag list API? Hope so. Okay. Yeah. So Great. but the thing is, what are you going to pivot? What, do, what are you going to do? So I think your first question is, can we change the APIs? I sure as hell hope so. <laughs> so okay. um, if there were a couple of months ago, I, I started a conversation of like, well, what do we want as parameters to these various list APIs, search APIs, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And you know, that that did not go as constructively as I had hoped. So I think those are the kind of things that we're trying to to gather the requirements to figure out well, what should we do? So, you know, is it do you want to just search a tag with a regex? Like is that really sure you could. Is that really all that helpful? You know, what if I have a way to know that this tag is a helm chart? It is a signature. So that's the kind of things that we you know, want to be able to do, or it is a reference to something. Should I even have to tag some of the things? So I actually agree with you. I, would, I do want to pivot on tags, a tag listing, 
but I don't want everything to be tagged. We don't tag layers, right? They're a, they're a detail of a manifest. Is signatures something that really needs to surface as a first class the same way as the container image? Or is it a special type of metadata that I want to be able to, to pivot on? So great question. So um, I think yeah, Josh I, also had, oh yeah, yeah. I, I can't see who's got hands up. I so I don't know the proper way. I put my hand in here, but I, I actually here. opened it up. So Josh, go ahead. Um so uh like I'm confused in some way by the presentation of this because you're um like what is the main is the main takeaway the way that we're referencing between different types of content or is there something special or prescriptive about the signature and SBOM piece or is that just like I, I I'm just confused why signatures and SBOMs are um like brought up so much because I feel like you're talking more about how these things are connected and you might as well say like uh, arbitrary types of content versus signatures because it it confuses it confuses me what I'm like mm -hmm. taking away from like I the think proposal. what I'm trying and if this doesn't answer the question then tell me what I was trying to do is not explain the destination we wound up but the journey to understand how we came across these scenarios like we we start we obviously started out with trying to sign content as we were going down that path we recognized there was some well one as we're signing content we wanted to try to avoid the mistakes of v1 notary v1 with the um I so, go so the, this is like a solution that has come up by trying to address a notary v2 and so all of this was fall take away from artifact spec is because of the requirements of because of the requirements and the journey and we were did not want it special we wanted to have notary be notary and we wanted to have the things that were common to a registry be separable so like when we started this we weren't thinking about s bombs i spent a year arguing with the azure security center that i did not want to store scan results in the registry because i didn't want them querying the registry just to get the scanners like you should have your own database you should do that on your side as the more we got through this, we realized that the pattern that we were going to do it for signatures turns out it was much more generally applicable to other other scenarios. So, like, we didn't start out trying to solve S bombs. In fact, we don't actually have an, we, this group that I'm working on. We don't actively do any S bomb work. We're doing signatures and we're doing the registry infrastructure. You're just saying conceptually, this is a way to, that you yeah. would address. Yeah, yeah. got it. Did that help? Yeah, I just I just didn't know if the you're proposing like I, I felt like it was a boiling of the ocean and you're more proposing that we can connect these things and S bomb and signatures just they they're a fallout of, of a those. benefit of the generalized design that we've Got it. taken. So yeah. I don't see anybody else with their hand raised, so I'm gonna collapse this actually so I can we are good to go thank you Amy. Sure. so the idea is that I can push an image I could then sign the image and then I can do an s-bomb and I could then sign the s-bomb and the idea is all of this stuff can get persisted in the registry and now you are starting to see some of the details of how we went about it but I'm actually trying to save the implementation details here for the moment because I know we'll have a lot of discussion I really want to try to ground it in why we're going around why we came to this conclusion and the approaches and part of it is the versioning but a lot of it is to do this was the scenarios we're trying to enable so i'm going to figure out how to do this can you guys still hear me yeah you're fine keep going okay. i will shout if you wander off <laughs> thank you all right, so um, this is, I wanted to, without getting into the details, I wanted to kind of show the experience where we landed. And of course, now I have to find out where my little demo script is. All right, so what I've got here, and I'm just running the docs that we've put in the um, artifact spec. Um, so anybody could follow along. So I'm just running an instance of Docker distribution. So when, for us to validate this, we didn't want to just start and end with a spec. 
we've been working on this for a long time, getting a lot of feedback. We've been validating it by building this, not in Azure, but in a you know vendor neutral way. You don't need to run anything with Azure to do this. Not only is it nice that others can use this outside of Azure, it turns out it's easier for us. I don't need to do a 50 region, five cloud deployment just to get a change, right? I can just do this um, by building a, and pushing it to Docker Hub or where I think we, GitHub is I think where we push the image. So I'm running that and I'm just gonna do, I'll do the build of the image. Uh, oh, sorry, wait, Docker build. Did I not start? I thought I had this running already, sorry. Hold on a second. Well, that's not helpful. Okay, so let me go back and now we'll do our Docker build. Which actually still doesn't make sense. And that was the argument now. So what happens when you go to lunch before demo? Oh, I see. Something happened with. I got an extra symbol here. Really? Oh, the port's missing. Oh, I see what happened. Hold on a second. Always do the demo live. Hooray. Yeah, really. Okay. So let me paste this again. I think I was missing. And we'll start this up again. Okay, that looks better. All right, so let's do that build again. Nothing special here. It's just, you know, uh, successfully tagged. And then we're going to push it to that local registry. And we'll we'll talk about offline later. It's the point here is I'm just trying to not add too many new concepts. So I simply have the net monitor image in the local registry. I want to sign it, or I want to, in this case, I want to generate an SBOM. I don't want to get into any details of whose SBOM it is, so we're going to generate a simple SBOM that says it's good. I want to push it to the registry. Now, I just I cheated here because I didn't want to have to do all kinds of curls and posts and everything. I'm just using ORAS that pushes to a repo. It pushes the uh, a type. It gives it an artifact type of SBOM example. And it's linking to, it sets the subject property to the image. This is the relationship that gets established. And then just take the JSON object and persist it as a blob, right? I think everybody here knows the magic that we do there. Well, knows the push APIs generally, but the point is the extra, there's two extra pieces here. One that we're establishing the relationship and notice there is no tag on the thing that I'm pushing. I'm just giving it the registry and the repo. There's no tag. So it pushes as a digest, but it does say that this is uh, an SBOM example for a type and it has the reference. And just for fun, because I want to be able to show filtering later, we'll push, sorry, well, we'll, we'll push a, a signature, which is signed by, I think I had a Jane Doe, I, I don't remember what I had. I think it just say it's signed at this point. So I'm just gonna push this again. And it's no different than I just did with the SBOM. It's pushing to that same registry repo. There's no tag, there's just, it generates the digest and pushes it. It says this is a signature example, but it's also establishing a relationship to the same image, take the signature JSON and send it up. Um, in this case, it's not even being tarred. It just sends it up as a JSON file, just a blob. Now, this was important. We wanted to make sure that we are keeping that repo clean. So if I look at the tag listing on that net monitor image, there is just the V1 tag. The information's there. It's just not surfaced in, a, in the tag listing. So as people start using, you know, the signatures or SBOMs or whatever it is they're storing, because we don't care at this level, all of their existing experiences are maintained. We didn't break anything. We have to go back and now they have to do something around their tag listing to your point, Jason. 
So now I want to get the references out. So I want to be able to say, um, hey, netmonitor image v1, what, what is referencing you? And of course, the netmonitor v1 manifest doesn't have anything in it that says what's referencing it because those were added after. It needs to be able, the, the registry needs to know how to do that reverse index and pull it up. Now, the, the refer is API, which we'll, we'll spend more time talking about in a minute. It takes a digest. It doesn't take a tag by intention. So I first have to get the digest for a tag. And I just, we happen to use the VRS Discover API to get that digest. And then I can curl the refer as API back out. So what we're saying here is, hey, registry, hanging off this, this uh, place, which there's a discussion we've got going where we want to be able to have an extensibility API. I think it's PR 111 or whatever. Um, on the net monitor namespace, use the manifests, pass it a digest for that manifest, and then there's a refer as API hanging off of it. And it returns a JSON object that says, here are the references to the net monitor digest. And if we look close, we'll see that not only is it a digest, but there is an artifact type property in there because if it was just digest, I wouldn't know which one's the SBOM, which one's the uh, signature. And of course, this would say signature type A. Sorry, that sounds more abstract. It would, this could say cosign, it could say notary, it could say uh, Josh's signature format. So I'm staring across the table at Josh. There's another annotation that would show up here that would say which, when it's signed, that it could actually set an annotation that says, this is the Wabbit Network's signature, which then the client would verify, but at least it knows to, to filter on it. And if I use this, not only can I get the reverse index on it, if I look at this query, there's a parameter on it that says artifact type SBOM example. So the registry still knows about two, but the API has an option that says registries can or may, whatever, may implement filtering. So now I can get back just the filtered list of that type. And now you can, since we don't want to always have to curl, we can actually use things like the Aura's API to do a discover with an output of tree. I can do it with the filtering or without the filtering. So notice here, I, I can now see them both and they're hierarchied by the, the uh, type. And then lastly, if I wanna pull it back out, it's the same pull APIs. We didn't have to change anything. The only thing I'm doing here is I'm first, I've got a little nested one, is first go discover the artifact type for S, the filter by artifact type for SBOM, get the digest out of it, and then it's just doing an RS pull of that digest. So now I've got that file back out. So I've now round tripped it through the registry and all of those you know, requirements that we've talked about is how we want to be able to push content in, understand it's different, not break the existing experiences that customers have. Registries do opt in to this behavior. There's no question that this is an opt in because we think it was important to opt in so we don't break all the experiences. And then you get a full experience back round trip. Uh, I'll do this one more, one more slide animation and then I'll pause again. So today with, everybody, with all the registries, you can do a Docker pull, Docker tag, Docker push. And I can get that across a whole registry from public to private, whatever. This whole pattern that we're doing, because I know a lot of times this comes up as, why don't I just do this with the client CLI? That's what NPM and other package managers do. That's true. But other package managers aren't trying to store all kinds of types. And all those types of types should have their own CLIs. The Helm has its, one, has, the Helm has its CLI. The WASM has its CLI. The Singularity has its own CLI. All of these things should have their own CLIs to have their own experiences that they can define. Just like the applications I use on my, my laptop, they all have different programs. I can use the Office, the office you know, apps to write and save various Office documents. 
I can use VS Code to save things. I can use something else, Golang files, whatever. But I don't need the Office APIs to copy stuff. I go use the file system APIs. The file system APIs don't know or care that they're Office documents or Golang files or whatever. It just knows how to copy things across. So that's what we wanted to do here, is we wanted to be able to say, hey, there's some OCI registry client. Copy the content from Docker IO to some registry. And if I don't specify different, copy the whole graph. There's nothing in that generic CLI that knows anything about any of the types. It just knows how to read the graph and, and copy them across. And now I can do things like include, exclude, because I might not want certain things to copy across. And I think that was, oh, and because I, when I copied it across, it went into that, it's some kind of data diode that I can get the information into that target registry. I can now validate the signatures in SBOMs and signatures on the SBOMs and the security scan results. And the other thing that we haven't thought of yet, or the community hasn't thought of yet, that they can assign as a graph and get copied into that registry. So before we get into the whole, here's how this, we wrote the specs and everything. I really just want to kind of set the stage of what was the experiences that we were shooting for, why, how did they surface in different places from not just APIs and manifest, sorry, manifest APIs or manifests or Docker push and Docker pull, but the browsable experiences that customers have on their registries or the tag listing or other APIs that they have. How do we not physically break and experience break those they they basically can opt in and get them as they want them so I'll, I'll stop there and i actually i realized i wasn't holding the mic i hope you guys were able to hear me okay yep you're you're mostly fine i will hold for questions all right seeing none no no hands are being actively raised but that doesn't mean that there isn't questions so yeah is there anything in I, like, if there's no questions, then I'm not sure <laughs> we could give everybody another session. The whole point of this was to have this conversation of the things we've been ragely debating for year, for more than a year now. I think most of the people that would have had questions have probably seen this over the past year. Michael Brown, passing to you. I can ask a question. Um, I'm curious, uh, like sort of following up on what we were talking about this morning mm -hmm. um, with the question of, you know, I think we're, we're, we've been iterating on this as a separate uh, manifest type. Uh, and I think the plans would be for at least some of us to launch with this as a experimental or, or other manifest type. Um, but what are people's thoughts on, on sort of the, eventual direction uh is this something that could be merged into image spec v1.1 does this actually warrant its own media type and separate manifest type uh and and sort of how do we how do we kind of like take this uh fork and and merge it back or or incorporate it back into the future direction of oci let me let me just do one thing and split that conversation of before we, because there's a, there's a hint of a bunch of implementation details there. I, how do people feel about the scenario? Like, is this something we want to support through, I mean, this is largely distribution. We want to be able to support the container image formats with these capabilities. But the point is, is this is really focused on, do we, as this OCI group and the people out that are slightly outside of it that are interested, is there, are these the scenarios that we want to support? Because if we don't, then the implementation doesn't matter. Not generally a, a kind of place where we do voting, but yeah, sure, I'm, I'm definitely interested. Um, if that helps, <laughs> I think I think we 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 obviously always wanted to do metadata. We just didn't get to it, so we did annotations instead temporarily. Mm -hmm. as a work 
around in, in many places, as you've seen, even with digest, we can do annotations. Um, but we, we recognize that that's not a programmatic, you know, solution. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And the annotations is an interesting one, too. Um, I'm sure if the baby wanted to vote in here. Um, it's the interesting thing here is it's not that the, the annotations that I knew when I built the image is one set of annotations. What happens when I have some annotations that I want to add after I pushed and promoted that image across different environments? Without right. in what this, process? You, you probably haven't seen it. There was there's been some discussion around you know what could we do with the tags API um, in the Slack. Um, I don't know if any anybody that's been chatting on that wants to bring it up, but. Um, I mean, it is probably not a good place to discuss alternative implementations, but but I think I think the answer would be yes. Pretty much everybody wants to do uh, these extension points, Steve. At least as near as I can. Right. So your point is is without getting into the implementation details, what you're saying is we not only do we want to support annotations on the originals, we want to be able to support additional annotations that don't change the digest of the original thing. Yeah, and I think we'd rather have you know, feels like reference where that's, you know, applicable um, so that you can attach refers. Um, in, in some sense, the tags were refers. And, and if we had a, there was one suggestion, was it John or somebody suggested using uh, another well-known tag name. So instead of colon latest, maybe colon metadata would give you a root uh, blob, for example, of, of some other metadata that's been extended in other words there's there's ways to do this yeah no I, I i'm not i'm trying to avoid the ways i'm trying to just i yeah. want to pass the first part is is this an interesting scenario because in some conversations they're like we don't want to do this in registry this is something you should go off and build in a product so we could have built this as a product i felt that, right. that was the wrong thing to do i'm that's why i'm kind of just before no, I, I think the right now i think the key thing to catch what, what was mentioned earlier is that yeah we don't need to agree whether or not these are important things, because they are, uh, from a spec perspective, it was more, it, I think the general question more is, can we do it in a generic enough way as an API to support these extension points without getting in the way, right, as a spec group? Or at least that was one of the, one of the, uh, the questions and points made earlier. Nisha, you're next. If I can unmute my mic, um, I, I may have been a little uh, late to the game uh, or like this conversation, it's been happening for a year now and I have uh, only just now, uh, maybe only lately have I understood kind of some of the nuances, but not really. I wonder if someone can explain why the current state of the specification does not allow for all of these um, various features. So, Steve, you can explain. Yeah, I, I, I'm, there's two parts of it. One, I, I want to, I definitely want to spend, this is why again, why we have so much time is to have that, all those conversations. Jason, was your, was yours going down more the technical aspect or was it more of the scenario first? Uh, to answer Lucia's question, there's nothing in the spec as I understand it that says a registry couldn't implement this exactly as described with image spec and distribution spec. The problem is that the referrers API would be not governed by the spec. Uh, you know, any registry can implement the, regist the, the referrers API if they want to. Uh, anybody can today push references if they want to. The problem is that that would not be specified and therefore it's not portable across registries unless registries agree. And if registries agree, then it should be in the spec. Right. I mean, every registry implements some kind of eventing model. Every one of them is different. Every registry has got some kind of way of getting a list of repos out. Most of them are different. So the point here is, can we define it? And I had a couple of slides I was going to go down. Why do we build specs? And it was, you know, it shows a path of a muddy road. It's like, okay, clearly cars are going down the way. Maybe we should pave it. Well, once you start paving it, there's people walking on the side of the road, getting hit by the road. It's probably an idea for some sidewalks and some bicycle paths and so forth. 
So we want to find the established patterns, build them in a spec so that they can be implemented across competitors and collaborators in a way that the content can move. I mean, I, quite frankly, the, the, in addition to just, I'd rather be doing something in the community as a whole and, and kind of up-leveling the whole ecosystem, because I just, I, I think that's, these are not the places, the registries are not the differentiators in the cloud. And all, all of our customers have some interaction with another cloud or another project. So I didn't, and, and we've seen these done in individual products and they're not as successful because they're not capable across other registries. We have people running JFrog inside of Azure. We have people running Harbor inside of Azure. We have on-prem registries that are trying to connect to Azure. And then we have MCR content, the Microsoft content that we ship that when we sign, we wanna make sure that somebody pulls it into their on-prem registry or our competitors, I'm air, I'll air quote of competitors cloud registry, that that signature can flow with it. So we think it's really important to do this as a standard and do it in a way that can be implemented by fierce competitors, in addition to people that just do want to get it done. So that's, that's See, the approach. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. Uh, sorry, I, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but I've only got about five minutes before I need to pick up my daughter from kindergarten. Uh, I feel like half of Michael's question got dropped in the answer to his question, which was how do we, can we, and if so, how uh, iterate image spec toward what you're describing as a use case? I think we generally agree the use case is valid, but one approach is to invent a new manifest type, which is certainly easier to go alone. And the other is to iterate image spec, which is to go farther together, uh, to borrow a thing I saw inverted on a pillow one time. Um, that was my main drive in asking that as the morning uh, session was like, can we update image spec? Do we have the will to overcome the challenges? I don't have an answer to that, obviously, but that is the that is like the crux of the question to me. And thank you, Michael, for asking it. And I wanted to make sure we didn't uh, lose yeah, it. No, I, I definitely didn't want to lose Michael's question. I just wanted to tease the question apart from the scenario to the- Yeah, I think, I think the second part of the question is the real important part of the question. Agreed. And I wanted to get back to it because I think it's important. Totally agree. So the, so the, your question, and I'm sorry, you have to cut off, but you know, if you have to leave, but the, we started this three years ago, whatever it was, when we started the artifacts spec, the artifacts work, I don't want to get to the whole spec conversation, the, the artifacts work that we did want to put it on the image spec. We asked for a property so that we can differentiate that went back and forth for months on whether we can do it. We landed on using the config, the manifest config that media type because there was no willingness to have any kind of um, additional property added. Even though we now talk about how it's totally valid to add another property and registries must accept them and clients must accept them, it was not tolerable to be accepted. So, do you have do you have any uh, notes, contemporaneous notes, or recordings of those conversations? I'd be curious to understand why there wasn't an appetite for that at that time, because uh, I think that's our only possible future uh, for image spec ever changing. Uh, and if there's precedent for a decision that says that that's impossible, then I think that answers the question, you know, one way or another. Well, I don't uh, think the answer was a good one per se, but those those are all captured, and I I can go back and dig. They're in issues and PRs on both the yeah uh, image. I'd love I'd love to history. I'd love to see that. That sort of history is exactly the thing I like as a relative MCI noob, uh, and it would be really helpful, I think, for other people joining the conversation, you know, in twenty twenty one instead of twenty eighteen. Yeah. So, and I think to be fair, a lot of them were like, we don't even know if this is a thing, so we're not really going to spend a lot of effort arguing over whether you can, should, or would. It was, we don't really know if this is a real thing, so this is the best we can do at the time. So it was just a matter of, at a certain point, you just stop, you, it isn't worth taking any further so that we were able to graph it onto an existing property. So I, there's definitely history there. I just don't know if we have a different conversation now because pretty, you know, there is a lot of the additional types that are not container images stored in registry. In fact, you probably, yeah. I'd be curious how many OCI manifests compared to the most of the uh, Docker images are built with the Docker manifest. How many OCI manifests are actually artifacts as opposed to container images? 
Yeah, I think it's, it's a good point that not only do we have, like the world is different than the last time this question was asked. There are, there's more of an appetite to store non-container image things. There's more of a, like, I think we know that we want uh, SBOMs and signatures to be linked to things somehow. Um, so if the, if the problem before was that there wasn't an appetite for it, I think that has changed in the last three years and it's worth revisiting mm -hmm. whether we need a whole new manifest type or if we can iterate. I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, filibuster this anymore and I got to go get a kid. So yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll watch this recording later and uh, good luck. Okay. So if there's more questions on kind of the scenario based scenario, we, I, we can switch over to more of the technical conversations. Seems reasonable and your time check has got roughly half an hour. Yeah, thank you. So if we go, let me just hide some of this stuff here. Um, if we go into, let me remember where we refactored some of this. Uh, let's see. So if we compare the two, so there was a couple of pieces around what we felt we needed um, as part of the scenario, one of which we felt it was pretty important that we had a way to differentiate types, not by a tag pattern, not by even an annotation. We really felt it was important to have a first class property that really surfaced what this thing is. In the original OCI uh, artifacts work, that was the manifest config that media type. There was, it was great, it got us unblocked, but we have a lot of, there's been bugs in registries because technically the config object is required. So we're saying put a media type on an object that doesn't actually need to exist. So the bug tends to be, there's a zero sized blob that gets pushed to registries. So that's been partly problematic. It also means that you can't actually use the same media config object, config type across something like a container image and a WASM because we're using that media type to say this is a WASM versus a container image. So that's how we wound up with the artifact type property as a first class object on it. The more obvious one is the, uh, the subject, what we now call the subject property. It's had like six different names along the ways, but now we've pretty much stabilized on the subject being it. And that was the other one that says, all right, this is an optional property that when I push this thing to a registry, and I'm not getting into the fact that we're calling it an artifact manifest. I'm just saying, this is a property that we wanna put. The big thing that we wanted to say is, it's not just on a descriptor or on a blob, it's actually a manifest object. Because part of that life cycle requirement said that we wanted to be able to think of these signatures, which could have one or more blobs, right? We've, in fact, I think Helm now was two layers. So they, they have their providence, whatever. But the point is that we never wanted to limit this to just one file or one tar that can get put to the registry. The container image format or the distribution in the whole ecosystem has this awesome uh, capability that I can have multiple collections of, of files. And they have this great deduping feature. So we wanted to be able to say this thing, because when we, when we look at things that are in a registry, the blob is the implementation detail. The manifest is what really is saying, this is a container image, this is a WASM, this is a Helm chart. And the blob is just an implementation detail. It's an important one, but it's not the thing you reason over. So we put the subject property on the manifest. This signature rep is represented by a manifest and can say it has an option to say, I refer to this other thing through this, with the subject property. So that, that was piece one. And then of course, to get the information out is the refers API, but then we're, we're getting more into the APIs to get the data out. And I, I think there's less contention there than there is on the image spec. Um, so that's those two properties. Then when the further we got along, we were like just had so much pushback on making any changes to the image spec that would risk possibly chain breaking any of the container runtime formats. So all right, we should, the distribution spec allows for new manifests. Why don't we go down that path? So when we did that, we were able to do things like the config object is now optional. In fact, we even did a little better optimization that the conf there actually isn't a config property. The config just gets put in one of the blobs with its own media type. And blobs are optional. The layer, the blobs collection, which was layers, by, by the spec of it, it's not even ordinal. 
the uh, Helm chart, they use the two layers. There's nothing ordinal about them. They know what layer is which because there's a media type on it that differentiates them. So that was a minor detail. This is like the cleanup work that we can do. The, um, what was the other piece? Oh, then there's the larger one that we really wanted to be able to start refactoring how these specs are interacting. This is what Phil, um, Vincent was talking about this morning. The container image runtime, for, like, well, let me I use the Hellman WASM community. The Hellman WASM community doing all kinds of interesting things on those specs. They take that generic spec and say, this is how they're going to use that generic spec for their use. What we wanted to be able to do is decouple what the container image format is trying to do for its uniqueness from the generic manifest. So by having the manifest say, look, we can support all these scenarios, then for instance, in the container image, and, and I have an example of how the container image could be put in this, and I'm, I, I hate doing this one because it's always suggests that I'm, the container image should move to this. I'm not, I'm just showing what the, let me see if this is the right one. Yeah, if you were to take the container image format today and wanted to store it in this new manifest, all I'm trying to show is here, if you pivoted on the media type, there is no config property, but if I split the collection on the media type, here's your config object. It's just in the blobs collection. And then here's your ordinal layers for the container image format. But it's not the manif this manifest isn't ordinal. It's just saying that when you put a container image in it, you're saying it's ordinal, just like when the Helm chart uses its, the, the, the manifest it uses today, details are important. They've decided how they want to use the manifest. So what happened was if we can't change the image spec and it's in an org that is not really focused on storing generic objects, and I say org, a group, whatever you want to call that boundary, we wanted to free up the image, image spec maintainers to focus on the container image and let the distribution focus on what it's trying to do store for all types. So all of those pieces combined is how we wound up, where was I trying to go here? With, get back to it. I think, wait, it actually wasn't here. Why there's, there's differences. And then because there was so much questions, I was trying to answer it with a bunch of details of, well, why did we have a new manifest? So I took a long time and wrote this up and took a lot of feedback. And I know people are busy and then this is the wall of text answer. So there's a lot of details in here. I'm happy to, to walk through those, but Jason to your, well, Jason's not here. To Jason's original point, not only was there no interest in making potential breaking changes or not even potential breaking changes by adding even properties to the image spec, it wasn't the image spec maintainers charter to solve this problem. So we wanted to do the refactoring. Does anybody want to, Michael, do you want to start, you want to pick up where Jason kind of left off on that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that we definitely have, uh, you know, I, I would say like some of these are, are big deals, right? Like config being required just probably doesn't make sense or maybe config needing to have a blob doesn't make sense the you know the layers being required and ordinal doesn't seem like something that artifacts should care about like it just doesn't matter clients can consume them as not ordinal lists just fine uh i believe technically you're right the the help right. doesn't pull it down and care about the layer so if somebody maintains <laughs> the ordinal nobody you know like, like we're in a it doesn't care but if it's we're required, in a content content addressable world here right so so everything is is ordinal uh whether we like it or not because otherwise the digest changes uh yeah i guess that's true um so like you know th there's no way to really change that constraint it's if you want the if you want the digest to stay the same you can't change any of the formatting or ordering of of manifest but uh you know, I, I, I guess I, I still am hoping, you know, even even with this work going on in, in 
this in this repo that we are able to merge or or adapt into the image spec and and so i think you know with the summit and and as we sort of start to uh finalize on some of the details of our proposal i think it's like a really good time to sort of ask for image spec maintainers to uh you know give input and and see if this is something that the image spec could or should or is willing to accommodate and if not whether oci needs to spin up a a third or fourth fourth spec uh for non-image things that are stored and handled by oci clients so brandon before i go to them just um one of the just the two details one is the the layers while we don't care if it's ordered or not in any of these types the manifest keeps it to philip's point or whoever mentioned it the the fact that it's required winds up being a constraint also like here's an example and we started getting a little sidetracked on it so i did close it but to the michael's mike's question around you know how do we add additional metadata this was one of the things we started playing with is i can actually add another ref type and push it to the registry and say this thing is an ex adding to the container image net monitor v1 and i've added two annotations to it and because the layers or blobs is not required this is a completely valid manifest push so so you know i think for that though i would go back to the the sort of overarching principles of what we're trying to do here like there there so far at least to my knowledge have been no use cases that people are asking for that would require us to support something like this well this I see Sargon rates. This is the one of the ways we were going to do additional metadata. Uh, Josh, can you hand Sargon the? Sorry, Brandon. I'm, Sargon hasn't asked the question, so I'm going to let him interject you. Uh, with no, we heard you. It worked. It, it worked. It was okay. Um, if annotations can be added post hoc, doesn't that kind of cause problems with the mutability of images? How so? Um, so, like, we use annotations to drive security configuration. If someone say, say pushes in annotations that turns off security. What's the override? You're actually asking what's the override? Yeah, exactly. Like, is there a way to get a point in time snapshot of all of the referring objects plus the manifest as opposed to allowing people to add more referring objects that may cause the behavior of the runtime to change? So I, I so we don't have all the i don't have any the best answers what i can say is because these are stored as separate things you can at least from the data point of view know that they were that annotation was override later some of the things that came out of this for instance was well is there a date stamp on this like how would i order these references back out and if i copy it from registry to one to registry two what's the ordering of that copy like what is the date on it so there is more flushing out that has to be done uh, on it. But I think that there is like we've been trying to we Azure me have uh, been trying to solve metadata in a registry for years like I've, I've talked to Liz Rice about what she did with you know the stuff that she did at, at Aqua and there's a bunch of other people that have tried to various approaches. This is not a fully thought out thing. This wasn't built for this intention. It was an interesting side effect like hey, how can we pull on this thread to solve some of these other problems that we're trying to do because remember this whole thing started as we we're solving one problem. And it turns out there was general patterns that like, wow, this looks like it's solving this other thing that we were trying to, to accomplish. So to Michael's point, this is one of the wise, one of the reasons we close this one is because it isn't really solving what we're really focused on right at this moment. But I think there's something interesting here that we can keep on tugging on to solve that additional metadata that for those kind of scenarios. The other thing about all this additional metadata, like it sounds like it's still going to be in tiny numbers. I think you said that at the beginning, but like, what is the performance implication for runtimes having to do uh, lots of re like potentially recursive pulls of uh, this metadata? Don't know yet. I mean, we haven't thought about the recursive. Like, what I'm hoping to do is start introducing some index APIs that say, hey, I can not only get the metadata for the net monitor image that I know of, what are all the artifacts in a registry that have this name value pair? 
I, we've had a hard enough time with Grok in the concept that an artifact type can be filtered on the reverse API. So there's definitely a crawl, walk, run of what we want to do. Um, and there's definitely some optimized APIs that can be done around it, but it's like, like this is the, there's something interesting here, not ready to go pull on it all the way. Uh, I don't know if Michael, you wanted to finish your thought or hand off to Brandon. I think Brandon uh, should, should go next. All right, so thinking through what the, what the image spec says today for images, the config is required, but potentially we could put an empty config in there and that media type is still important when you're looking at the OCI index definition. So you could just say it's an empty config. It's just a open bracket, close bracket inside the JSON, just mm -hmm. up a really tiny blob. Layers, I don't think it's required. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and so we could potentially get really close to this minimal example. And so I think the question goes back to some of the image spec maintainers. How important is it to keep that spec fixed for exactly what it's doing versus letting it expand for some of these other use cases and saying, hey, the layers don't have to be ordinal. They can depending on the media type, they might not be ordinal. And so we can just relax some of these specifications and yeah, all historical uses of it were ordinal, but maybe in the future they aren't. And so that's kind of like an introduction to a bigger question of, does it make sense? And sorry, I forgot to have my video turned off here. Kind of a, going to the bigger question of, does it make sense to introduce an entire new media type that we have to manage versus extending the spec. And that's just kind of an open question back to the image spec maintainers of what makes more sense. I mean, whoever's an image spec maintainer or not, what's, what's the opinion of the group? Because I, I, just to add to it, it's, it's not simply adding some properties. Like the clients would need to know what this is, where, talking about that that whole cracking of challenge what Jason talked about this morning like what if you allow something to not be required anymore what if there is a property there that some should ignore but some should require when you you could somewhat argue the maybe I have to go back and think about it again the artifact type property may or may not be required but just adding the subject and it actually still says subject manifest here is an example it should say subject but that's the dating of it just adding that isn't helpful unless the registry knows how to do something with it. So the point is that there's no free ride here. Just like registries didn't magically support index, the index, the uh, OCI index, they had to go do work to support that. So but anybody else? So when you said that registries have to do work to support that, and presumably they'd have to do work to support this change, have you talked to any registry maintainers who um, have said that this work seems worth doing? Or do you know their general take on it? Uh, Michael, you want to speak to it? Uh, okay, sorry, what was the question? Oh, I was I was just curious if there's been discussions with any registry maintainers as to their opinions on the work required to adjust to a proposal like this, if it were accepted. Yeah. Um, so you know the the work has been happening in the in that Oris project artifacts spec uh the fork of what what steve's showing right now uh where i i've been participating uh, so i work on amazon ecdr uh steve's obviously uh at microsoft with azure and uh there have been you know there have been i think who's the other we have docker hub uh that's been participating and then there's, you know, everyone's obviously welcome. And then I think as we've started to finalize, what we're hoping to do is, is sort of shop it around to, to maintainers uh, as well as existing registry implementers. Uh, and so this, like, this is absolutely part of that, uh, 
in asking for feedback and, and asking for people to sort of make an assessment of whether this would be something that uh, is implementable. Uh, that's not a question that I can answer on behalf of other people, uh, but I think certainly it's something that uh, we are hearing uh, from AWS customers that they want and something that we would want to implement in ECR. And I think the key question you mentioned, Rose, is there's that subtlety of um, want. So, you know, there's been a couple of features we've worked on in registries for a while that, you know, in, that didn't necessarily hit the value proposition that justified the investment. You know, we all, any of us running registries have way too much to do and never enough people. And it's a long list of features that are customer demanding features for security to tenants to reliability or just capabilities that we can't get, we can never get to all of them. So the ones that surface the top are the highest demand. When this started, it wasn't just for the sake of storing, like we definitely had a demand for Helm charts and Singularity and Terraform and others. So we went down that investment because it was cheaper to do that than to build up another team to run a Terraform server. Customers are, the thought is security, signing, which has been something we've been trying to do for years, all of us, and Docker Content Trust doesn't cut it with Notary V1. So we, customers are asking us all the time, we didn't have a viable solution. So now that we had a viable solution, when I go back and ask customers, what do you want me to prioritize? Feature ABC or this? Oh, no, no, I definitely need signing. So the, the thing is the value has got to be there to be worth us doing this work because there wasn't, there wasn't a free ride to do this in any kind of effective manner because if we did it in any other, I don't want to talk about the implementation detail, but the experiences, if we did it in any other way, we were going to wind up with a whole bunch of other support issues and band-aids on top of band-aids to you know, try to mask noise that was coming out of the system. So the answer is like for us and you know AWS, obviously they've chosen to go into it. Other registry operators have also been very interested in, they've been busy. So they've been like, nope, nope, I, let's see how this lands. But yes, we're very interested. And at the end of the day, it's gonna vote with their feet, right? The customers are either gonna demand it and the registries will then provide, pr uh, prioritize this work or they won't. What we've been trying to do to help it, though, is the combination of doing the work in the CNCF distribution instance, because there are a lot of registries that use that base code base. So we've done a bunch of the work there to flush out and get it started um, so that they can go build on it there. But uh, Rose, were you start to say something? I saw you the yellow bar wrap around you. Oh, no. I think I was just moving to the mute button. <laughs> Oh, Mike, you get your hand raised still, or is that just remnant? Go. Oh. Yeah, I figured I'd give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been in class. I had to raise my hand. Um, <laughs> this, this question is, is actually for Phil. Um, Phil, I was wondering if you, if you might have any advice. You're one of the few people I know of that have created a second manifest type in this ecosystem. Um, do, do you have any advice for the team? You know, what do you think about this project? Uh, well, first, I'm surprised to hear that I created a manifest type. <laughs> well, index or fat manifest, how, however you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was like, first, uh, yeah, first of all, I didn't create it personally. I mean, Derek McGowan and Steve O. It, it was work that was ongoing at Docker at the time. Actually, there's, two names that no longer part of any container org that were even before those guys uh, working on that. So, yeah, I, that, uh, I'm not trying to dismiss that, you know, there might be value from thinking about it that way, but it was so early in the ecosystem that, it, that, you know, they already made a huge shift, like a, you know, the, v1 docker v1 was shifting to v2 like it, it came in an era where people were going to have to migrate a lot of content anyway 
And so I don't think it was really as tricky a uh, <clears throat> inflection point that we have now where there's billions of images and, you know, tons of, of managed cloud registries. You know, those things just didn't exist in those very, very early days. So I, I think, but, you know, since you gave me the floor, the one comment I'll make at this point is I, I think something that's holding up this discussion is um, I feel like, uh, you know, not to call you out, Steve, but I think you're, you did a great job giving us the experience that's the actual requirement. Customers could care less whether it's artifact this or, or as that. Like, we have to, I think a, a lot of people are trying to ask the question, well, you know, okay, yeah, a bunch of people said no a long time ago. Like, today people are asking, can we give those experiences without going to this exact implementation? And I think you're saying no, and a lot of other people are saying, can we talk about it? And I think that's where we're stuck. And then I think it would be good to complete the proposal that was started, create a working group, and actually hash out those two paths and come up with an actual decision point of, here's the things we can do, and here's proposal one. You, you've already fleshed out you know, the artifact manifest, I think everyone's read and commented on, you know, on the issues and pull requests for months. So I, you know, I don't know that as I sit here, that's where I'm, I feel like just to kind of break through the discussion, like people are asking, can we do it this way? And I think we're not getting to the point where everyone's on board to say, yeah, let's work together and figure that out and stop saying it has to be this way or this way because that's yeah. that's I, I, let me try. We haven't really said it. Oh, no. i think you just died here oh, yeah, got some... how about that? we can't hear whoever's talking in the background yes yeah, how about okay i we think this battery died which yeah looks like it um i think the i wouldn't say it has to be done any one way the the thing that you've been seeing is like if you look back at all these PRs, like this has been going on for a couple of years and it's not, I'm not trying to make a point of time, but if you bounce around on them, I, it's, I don't want to call it whack-a-mole or whatever, but we have tried so many different approaches and then we like, no, 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 you can't do that. Okay, what about this? Well, you can't do that. You should go back to that. Well, we were told we can't do that. Well, what about this? Well, we've learned something new that maybe we can do this. So it's not, and then if I try to explain the feedback I got from four different people that are now busy on something else and can't explain why that was a reason. I write a long doc and then I get that's a wall of text. Don't bother me. So I'm up for all of this. Yeah, yeah. Like there's I'm not doing this because I love getting beat up and wasting my time on all this stuff. No, no. I really believe that this is a thing and I don't want it to be outside of OCI. Yeah. But we had to find well, a way to do it where two fierce competitors can collaborate without having legal and other problems going. So we want to, I'm doing this because I want to find that collaboration, but it has to be an engagement that has the time commitment and the willingness to collaborate and move forward, not no, 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 go over there, no, go over here. But like, how do we make this work going forward? And how do we break through the problems that, you know, Jason outlined earlier? Yeah, and that, that's, yeah. I think the problem with talking about it historically is like, you showed up to the OCI at a time when everyone had disappeared. Mm -hmm. Vin, Vincent was gone for a good while. I, I kind of lost, you know, had focus elsewhere for a while. So I, I guess what I'm struggling with talking about history is like, Right now, there's a bunch of active people who seem to really care about this topic, Love which it. is great. And I think I think we're going to have to find a way to say, I'm sorry that things didn't progress the last two years. I wish they had. I wish the right people were involved. But the problem is, like, we can't fix that right I'm now. I'm not trying to hash the back. Yeah, I, yeah. I, but this is even recently. 
I mean, like within the last weeks, we've got yeah, we get so, feedback so and bounced around. It's yeah, not so here's not my constructive. here's my advice for that. Ask the TOB to vote on the working group. Okay. I told you to do that a month ago. And then time box it. We're going to decide by this date. We're going to have all the discussions we want to have, and then come come up with the proposals. That way, there's not this you know never ending like mm -hmm. uh, that's the only way you can take a bunch of different opinions and come to a, an agreement is to say you know if you're too busy you can't come to the meeting i'm sorry then you know we have to decide here because companies are making decisions and implementations have to happen so i think that's the problem is like it's it's not that a lot of people just are wanting to get in the way it's that there's not a set of very discrete steps that have been laid out here's the working group here's the timeline here's the goal because once you have that then that's the uh, I, I, club, club is the wrong word but that <laughs> that's the thing you use to say if you weren't here here's the decision we made and that you know mm -hmm. that's that's life but if if you don't have that plan then you know it, it just seems like we're in this never-ending churn of, yep. of discussion and no answers and well this person has this thought so that, that's my that's my opinion that's okay. my advice we're a couple of minutes over but we're in a break any other questions oh. I'm kind of having this discussion on a thread in the, the chat, and it might be worth bringing up here. Yeah. The way that we run our registry, and I know other people run their registries like this, is their security posture is uh, anyone can upload, downloading is somewhat limited, uh, and no one can delete. And that gives you the ability to say that like um, you don't really have to worry about, um, I mean, because everything's immutable, you don't really have to worry about uh, access control too much, and you can verify the authenticity of the image at runtime based on that immutable manifest uh, hash. Uh, now we have all these things that can affect the runtime characteristics. And for example, if someone uploads a security scan saying that there's like a, a SEV1 vulnerability um, that makes an image impossible to run, it doesn't make it. It gives you data to decide Wait. whether you want the image to not run. If the runtime sees an annotation that says that this image has a vulnerability and the policy is don't run vulnerable policy, images. But that's the point. But anyway, like, but yeah. yeah. So, so like how, like this kind of changes a large aspect of the security posture, I think, that people have on registries. Mm -hmm. um, because it means that you have to be able to delete data or have tighter controls of who can push stuff to your registry. Does I'm struggling because there's a couple of things you said about, you know, uh, nothing ever gets deleted. Like, I don't want to ever say anybody has ever. Um, we definitely have problems where we don't have enough tool, even though we support delete and support, you know, fairly rich queries on how to do delete, it is still not enough. There is not enough metadata in the system for people to understand how do they separate their production deployed images versus the crap they built they never going to use. So um, I don't I, I don't want to pivot too much on that one, but like I guess what it, where were you going with it? What is the thing you were so like because I thought the, you were going that it, it, we shouldn't have to worry about lifecycle manager because you should never delete anything anyway. I, 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 I guess the biggest thing is like if anyone can so like with our current posture where anyone once they have access to the registry in general can push anything to any repository if they're able to push things that will affect an existing manifest it changes the secure or changes our requirements around our security posture we have to be more controlling of who can push what to what repository so, so your sorry. your premise is that because because anybody can push to any repo I could push something that would keep it from being deployed. Is right. That, and I guess I'm a little surprised you're saying anybody could push anything to any repo. Well, it's fine. Like, why, it, write only storage is great. And content addressable. I think the concern here is when we add the reference types 
and that those reference types give you that ability to modify other artifacts that are there where before you couldn't touch someone else's thing that they pushed up. Sargon, I've got a question for you. In Yeah, we hear you. In, in your model, can anyone push tags too, or is it just pushing content? Anyone can push tags, and we tell people not to use tags in production. So you have a separate data store that tells you which digest to actually use in production, and that data store is not open authentication. That data store is like super tightly controlled, and there's like a, an entire team and toolkit to manage that. So it, it sounds to me like you might want to do the same thing for references. But Where how do you, you have you have access control over, you know, the ability to actually associate different things together? Since that's your mechanism of, of discovery, or that's your mechanism of controlling what content matters. But if it's all in the existing registry, we would have to add controls around the existing registry. And sometimes that's easy to do. But like, for example, if we wanted to use like Artifactory, I have no idea how we would do that with Artifactory. But let me also tease us a little bit because you're worried about I can, if, if I can push new things, but that assumes you can pull, pull by the reference type. So you have to go implement the referrers API to even get that information out. You could, whatever the ecosystem is that you're trying to enable that, you could also put filtering on it or not allow the referrers API. I mean, we, the whole authentication models that we've had in, in registries has always been, I don't want to say vague, it's been left to the implementation for lots of different reasons. We've seen, like, we definitely get questions on, I only want to push to repo one, not repo two. I want to be able to pull from repo three, but I can push to repo one, five, and six. We've seen some customers and some products, I think CodeFresh either does or did, do tag level permissions. So I hear what you're saying. I agree with you. You know, it's an interesting problem. I don't, I guess I would look at it from a, a different way to do permission models because what Sam was poking at is if I could push anything, I can push bad image to tag deploy now or whatever the tag is you used. But what you're saying is you don't deploy by tags, you deploy by digest. And so I, yeah. I, I guess it would be valuable if there was consideration for at least at runtime to be able to capture the set of references mm -hmm. and the manifest as some kind of immutable hash. So they are all immutable digests. So